So we looked at about 100 venues uh, on this path, and we kept coming back to one, College for Creative Studies in Detroit. And, and why? Well, first of all, when we contacted the venue, it, it felt perfect because of its story part of Detroit's history, and we'll have President Rick Rogers come up to present that. Um, because Detroit does have a history, and we understand that it has a history here in terms of the industrial periods of Detroit, it's reimagining a future for itself. And then the concepts of design and creativity and imagination that come out of this school, and you can, you can see it as you, as you tour around the campus, um, is in line with what we believe and our core values. So our first uh, welcome guest to the stage here is President Rick Rogers, and we're delighted to let him speak to you and tell you a bit about the history of College for Creative Studies. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we're so glad uh, at the College for Creative Studies that uh, Radical Exchange is holding its first conference here on our campus and in Detroit. Um, just following on what Jeff said, uh, ra uh, Radical Exchange is about re-envisioning the future. Uh, and we're certainly in a process in Detroit now of trying to re-envision a city for the 21st century and trying to make sure that the reinvention of the city is driven by values of equity and inclusion. And so uh, what Radical Exchange is about and what Detroit is trying to do really resonate with one another. At CCS, that's what we call the college, um, CCS, uh, we're kind of in the same uh, uh, spirit. We have been trying over the last decade or so to reimagine what uh, the role of an art and design college in a city uh, should be, and um, we've made a lot of changes uh, that have moved us in that direction, and um, I want to tell you a little bit about that, and, and I'm very grateful for uh, these few minutes so I can acquaint those of you who don't know much about us uh, with what we're doing. So uh, just uh, very quickly, a um, little background on CCS. We were founded in 1906 as the Detroit Society of Arts and Crafts. We were part of the arts and crafts movement that started in Europe in the um, mid 19th century and migrated over to the United States. Uh, while a lot of people think that the arts and crafts movement was uh, about aesthetics, it was much more importantly about social justice for workers uh, to try to uh, restore dignity to work done uh, by uh, the human hand in the face of mass industrialization. And uh, the founders of the Arts and Crafts Society in Detroit had um, a purpose uh, that was as follows, to encourage good and beautiful work as applied to useful service. And, you know, and even though the college has evolved a great deal since um, those founding days, that is still what we are about. We are very much concerned about what artists and designers can do to provide useful service to society. We do that through traditional degree programs, but we also do it in a bunch of other ways. Um, we, do, we offer the Bachelor of Fine Arts and the Master of Fine Arts degree degrees. Um, we have uh, about 1,425 degree students. Uh, the Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, we award in uh, 12 different disciplines ranging from very traditional things like painting, sculpture, printmaking, glass blowing, ceramics, uh, metal smithing, to very high tech stuff like uh, automotive design, animation, uh, digital film, game design. We are um, considered to be one of the best, if not the best, uh, schools in the world uh, for automotive design, um, but our curriculum is very broad. At the graduate level, we offer programs in um, four different uh, design areas. So uh, we, uh, as part of this um, reimagining of the college, um, we uh, looked uh, to see what else we could be doing that could uh, make us more responsible uh, citizens of, as institutional citizens in the city. And uh, so we expanded what we do. We, um, in addition to the de degree programs, we founded a um, charter school, um, K through 12, focused on art and design, to give inner city kids an opportunity to be exposed to the kinds of disciplines and professions that we teach at the college level, and uh, possibly to uh, graduate from an art and design focused high school and then matriculate to uh, CCS or to colleges like CCS. Um, we also uh, vastly expanded our community outreach programs. 
We have art education programs throughout the neighborhoods of Detroit. Uh, we reach about 3,000 kids a year through those programs. It's all free uh, to those kids, all supported by uh, philanthropy. And we've also uh, uh, had an ongoing series of uh, public sculpture projects in neighborhoods, about 25 to date, always done in collaboration with uh, organizations and residents of the neighborhood. So uh, it's an educational experience and the, uh, and the residents basically drive what the project is all about. And then we um, also got into economic development. We founded an organization that's now called Design Corps Detroit uh, to, help, uh, to help move um, Detroit's economy forward and to provide greater um, job opportunities for uh, citizens of Detroit. So th in a nutshell, that's, um, that's uh, what the college does. We work in those um, four areas. Uh, part of that, part of that uh, reinvention of the college was the um, development of this building. This is, we actually have two campuses. Our uh, original campus is seven-tenths of a mile south of here, just east of the Detroit Institute of Arts. But 10 years ago, we opened this facility, now called the A. Alfred Taubman Center for Design Education. Uh, this was um, a great opportunity for us because it enabled us to do all those other things that I just talked about. This was the original General Motors Research Engineering and Design Center, although they did not call it a design at the time. Uh, it was called Art and Color. That's uh, what the original name of, uh, of automotive design was. And uh, this building was a site of enormous uh, technological innovation. Uh, it, that, the engineering side of uh, the activity was led by uh, the legendary Charles Kettering, a very famous inventor known as Boss Kettering. And the design side was led by a man named Harley Earl, um, who was really considered to be the first true designer in the history of the automotive industry. And Harley Earl's office was actually right through that doorway over there. And this was sort of the domain of uh, what was first called art and color, and then styling, and then design. But all kinds of innovations were developed here, and not just automotive. The, fully automatic, uh, the first fully automatic transmission was developed here. Uh, automotive safety glass, sealed beam headlights, engine-driven fuel pump, on and on and on. Doesn't sound very sexy, but um, the sexier stuff was the, kind of the non-automotive stuff. They, developed, they invented Freon in this building. That led to the development of the first room size air conditioner, but they also developed the world's first heart-lung machine in this, building, in this building, which gives you a sense of the breadth of General Motors in those days. We're talking about from uh, 1928, when the first part of this building was built, up until the mid-50s. Um, so all kinds of innovations, and that spirit of innovation still uh, occupies this building. In fact, our students in our automotive design program are studying where their discipline was invented. Um, that's a pretty amazing opportunity. Um, so uh, when we uh, took it over from General Motors uh, uh, almost 10 years ago uh, now, um, we decided to fill it up with all those activities uh, we, uh, I was talking about and to see if we could get those activities to work together. So we actually have the 6th through 12th grade of the charter school in this building. We have all of our undergraduate and graduate design programs here. And the notion was, we have our economic development office, Design Corps Detroit here, and as well as our community outreach programs. And the notion was that it wouldn't just be an educational center, but we would try to uh, extended into the professional realm, so we would actually have uh, creative businesses, design-oriented businesses in the building to uh, work with all of the educational programs and to try to develop various kinds of synergies. And much to our good fortune, much to Detroit's good fortune, a company named Shinola came along, a startup company that you probably have heard of and makes watches and leather goods and bicycles and a variety of other uh, consumer products. They're founded by a guy who was from Dallas, Texas, but he was looking for another place to start this business because it was all, it was going to be entirely about manu manufactured in the USA. And uh, he wanted to do that in a city where that made sense and with Detroit's uh, legendary history in manufacturing. He liked the idea of coming here. We, we uh, met up through a serendipitous set of circumstances, and Shinola ended up being located here as well, 
uh, with all of its design op, uh, activities, its business activities, its watch manufacturing, and its leather manufacturing, all on the fourth and fifth floors. So this, all, all this stuff actually does work together very um, unusual way. We have student housing in the building. 300 students live here. We have food service. Um, it's a mini city. And uh, at the time we opened the building, which was right after uh, the start of the Great Recession, uh, in, uh, we opened in 2009, this was one of the few signs of real hope uh, in Detroit. Fortunately, we've gotten beyond that point, and now there are lots more signs of, the, of hope in Detroit. But CCS has been very fortunate to be able to uh, contribute to uh, this sort of, sort of uh, renaissance that's happening in Detroit right now. The last thing I just wanted to share with you is um, some of the activities of this entity that we have called Design Corps Detroit. Um, this is an economic development organization that focuses on design-driven businesses. So we believe that design is a very important force in society uh, and can be applied to many different kinds of problems. Uh, one of the things that Design Corps does is try to uh, help uh, design-driven businesses get started, grow, and also to attract uh, design-driven businesses. They were instrumental in bringing uh, Shinola to Detroit. But uh, Design Corps also uh, was responsible for obtaining for Detroit designation as a UNESCO city of design. It is the only we are, in Detroit, the only UNESCO city of design in the United States. And uh, we are one of 30 cities around the world. And this has created tremendous opportunities for uh, communication, sharing of best practices, collaboration. Uh, and uh, around this theme, uh, Design Corps has developed a, what is called the City of Design Action Plan, a 10-year um, a plan to bring the uh, practice of inclusive design more deeply into uh, all aspects of city life, particularly policy development, the improvement of the delivery of civic services, and um, the um, general well-being of the citizenry. So we are very, the college design core is very much focused now on how the uh, practice of design, the methodologies of design can contribute to the improvement of a society, and particularly inclusive design, which uh, tries to ensure that the benefits of design are shared by all. So that kind of uh, sums up where we are at this institution right now. I think it's very harmonious with what you are all here to discuss. I want to say again how happy we are that you're here, and wish you all the best for a very uh, productive conference. Thanks so much.